Well, former Inspector General of Police and Chairman of the Police Service Commission, Dr. Solomon Arasa, joins us now to unpack it all for us. Uh, good to see you and thanks for your time. And if you look at some of the conversations going on on this, some will say that the police over the years uh, has been stripped of so many of its powers. Uh, once we woke up uh, FRSC out of the police, uh, so many of these uh, mm -hmm. out of the police to the extent that NSCDC out of the police, what is left of the police tells a story that if nothing is done about reforming the police, we just might lose the entire fabric. Let's talk, we'll start by talking about police reform. You had written, you know, uh, on that, you had spoken on that. Uh, now you're here looking at that for us as a people. What do we need to do to actually give us uh, that police that many Nigerians are desirous of? Uh, thank you very much for having me. You see, we, since 1999, uh, when we started a new dispensation, political dispensation, uh, we've had about four police reforms. <clears throat> the Damadami reforms, the MD Yesuf reforms, Ulubayade, you know, reforms, clean foundation, and all this type of thing. You see, the, the, the gap, the missing link we have always had in all these reforms is the political will to implement, you know, the decisions that, uh, you know, that comes out from the, the, the like, I give you an example. The Damadami, uh, this thing, this state police they are talking about now, is not, is not in novel. Uh, the Damadami, you know, police reforms had mentioned that to say the police is, you know, ha organizationally and structurally was defective in so many respects. And that there was time to try to see how they ca can unbundle it. They, they talked about over centralization of policing functions to say that is it not possible for us to start divesting some powers, you know, to the you know subnational groups, so that whenever you have uh, petty issues that you have to deal with, uh, issues of uh, traffic control, uh, environmental issues, states can easily state laws can easily handle those things, and you could see, you know, uh, that Lagos State has already has a semblance of the state police. Uh, last man, uh, uh, you know. So you you see, and uh, if you want to look back to where we're coming from, our various communities were policed before we had formal policing. The various right. kingdoms in our community they were, they were policed, either through you know the age group system, you know the uh, cult uh, uh, group issue. There, there, there was there was there was policing, but the missing link was that when we now went into formal policing, we did not incorporate you know the social contents of what we were leaving behind into the modern policing structure. Uh, the modern policing structure, we inherited it. Mm. <clears throat> and uh, the, 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 the foundation was based on force. Right. So you see, when you have a situation like that, there is supposed to be a paradigm shift when we had independence. Unfortunately, we went through a long period of interregnum under the military regime. So you now discover that you have a force that, you know, instead of being winning the hearts and minds of the people was now the people who was, you know, they, they, they were now, you know, uh, uh, in, you know infracting on the, the rights of the people. Right. And you cannot police a society without good information which can be processed into intelligence. So that is why a lot of people are saying, is it not possible for us to go back and see how we can incorporate the non-state actors into our policing system. Hmm. So even this state police they are talking about is how can you bring the non-state actors, traditional rulers, National Union of Road Transport Workers, uh, the Market Women Association, uh, the MBA, the Nigerian Union of Journalists, you know, how can you organize them in such a way that they will become, you know, um, 
uh, a resource for you yeah. for you to be able to deal with your issues. So I think that is I think those are those are the issues we have to yes. we have to look at. <clears throat> yes, indeed. But mm. um, the Inspector General of Police, mm. Kaude Betoko, mm. believes that Nigeria is not ripe for state. <laughs> you know, uh, police, I mean, uh, certainly against uh, the grain, where more and more people are saying state policing is the way to go. What do you think uh, his concerns are? I mean, you've been IGP. Yes. You're also, so if, if yeah. you had asked me that question eight years ago when I was an IGP, mm -hmm. I would not want my, you know, my authority to be diminished. You know, so it is commonsensical. You cannot, um, uh, you, you, you can see that you mentioned just now uh, when you were making your introduction that most of this, even the army, yeah. the fire service, the prisons, the co immigrations, the FCC. all were children of the same parentage mm. of the police. Well, yeah. They all <laughs> you know, evolved from the police force. And uh, now that they have left, you know, the cannibalization has continued. Uh, I, th I think the, what we actually need is the political will to take a look at the Nigerian police force and say, what sort of a police force do you actually want? Do you want a police force that is, you know, responsible, that is, you have uh, uh, men and officers who are mentally mobile, who can, you know, who can look at issues and discuss them in such a way that it could impact on members of the public. So uh, I, I, I think, you know, it is time we start thinking about, um, you know, uh, devolving powers to this thing. But they are, they are at the same time, you know, as I mentioned today during the, the, the conference, it's a big, it's, it, it's, it's not a walk in the park. Right. It's going to take a long time. It's not something that you just come and just walk through. Uh, the Damadami uh, reforms, one of the things he said, he said, OK, is it not possible for us now to start taking people from CSPs down to their various states where they come from? Mm -hmm. One, linguistic advantage. They understand the topography. They understand the social cultural environment in which they are going to function. Mm -hmm. So as a starting point, we could take them back to their various states. Then you now take the six geopolitical zones, you now take the DIGs from those zones and take them to superintend over those zones. Mm -hmm. That way, even if you want to throw up an IG, you can now use you know, his performance right. you know, in the geopolitical zone where he superintended. To, to assess him, to say, has this guy got the content? Is, you know, is, he, is he deep enough? Is it, does he, can he manage? Uh, policing is man material. Your ability to you know, put together you know, the resource you have with the manpower you have and deploy them in such an effective way for you to achieve results. You know, so, Dr. Rasa, yeah. sorry to cut you here because now you, you, you painted a picture and it, it sort of brings to mind some of the things we see in other parts of the world, specifically even in the United Kingdom, whereby uh, uh, as a journalist I could be a part of the constabulary Yes. and I have to police my community and yes. I'm known. Mm -hmm. Because the moment you started talking about taking us back in time, telling us about the traditional institutions and other be. unions, <clears throat> it's reminisce, uh, reminiscent of what can be brought back. Now, let's see if we can run away from the cliché uh, political wheel. What are those things that ordinarily can set it off? Because now that the conversation is coming back again, that will put us on track to fixing this. Uh, because we need a first step to actually get into uh, that state police. But we haven't actually started. We're still no, on the conversation. No, no, yeah. You see, um, the typologies of crime, they differ from uh, zone to zone. Like for instance, if you are talking about, you know, the Northeast, you are talking about issues of terrorism. That is, you know, the, the issue. You remember the joint, uh, the civilian uh, JTF? Yes, yes. They were very effective. Why were they effective? They were effective because you understood the terrain. 
they could speak the language. They came from that same sociocultural background. So they could feed in information into the system that would aid you know, the de uh, dealing with those crimes. Policing strategies, they are supposed to differ from region to region. You know, right. you just, what you mentioned now, you were, you, were, you were trying to allude to something like neighborhood watch. Yeah. Yeah. It has been very effective. Which in Lagos Le has. Thank you, very, very effective in Lagos. Mm. You know, uh, you could talk about zero tolerance for policing. Like, you know, when uh, my former boss, staff I was there, fire for fire. Mm. You know, that one is, oh, deal with the issues, you know, as they come. Uh, you could also talk about things like the broken window. That if a window is broken, if you don't fix it, you know, but that is just, you know, a, a figurative expression. Mm, yes. So you are talking about if you don't deal with issues of drugs, right. then it metamorphosed in, into kidnapping, it metamorphosed into, you know, mm. heinous crimes. So you see, it depends on the area you are looking at it and uh, as I said, how... So what kind of template should Nigeria, you know, be looking at? Because back to what Egberto Kun said, that mm -hmm. look, it's not really about state policing. Yes. It's about addressing the challenges of the police. You've been there. Yes. And you're, you're still <laughs> involved with... What yes. exactly are those key, you know, challenges? And how can the Nigeria police actually live up to it? It's building. Well, you, you, you see, when you have a police force, you know, um, you talk about issues of recruitment. How do you recruit your men? What are the standards you set for them? You know, are these people who are people who you are bringing into the system that can impact, you know, issues of anger management, ah. mm. issues of, you know, uh, empathy towards members of the public. I, 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 I was allergic to roadblocks when I was an Asian. I didn't like them because, you see, that roadblock, those are the areas where issues of corruption, you know, they fester. But then you look at the men, the welfare of the men. How do you keep a man on the, on the roadblock for eight, ten? 15 hours, no water, no dry ration, and you expect that he will not suffer temporary insanity during those period of time? It's not possible, you know. So we, 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 we just have to take a look at our policing system in this country. Our, how do we recruit our men? How do you train them? You know, what are their welfare packages? How do you treat them? You know, uh, it is the way, if you treat a, if you treat your puppy, you know, nicely. <laughs> whenever you come into, uh, you are coming into it's your residence. Eh? It's 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 still. That is that is exactly what. Uh, and now that you're there, there yeah. and now w w try, more than twice, you've used uh, Lagos as an example, mm. and our president uh, actually started some of these things that uh, uh, Lagos, you know yeah. has been built upon. Academically, again, you've written and spoken about this. Uh, you're also a lawyer. Uh, is this part of the conversation you're having with the police uh, commission and the ministry, uh, which ultimately gets to the president to see if this conversation has started reforming our police? Uh, well, um, the commission is, um, is saddled with enormous responsibility. We are meant to recruit, we are meant to promote, we are meant to discipline, and also, you know, um, bring out policies that will aid the police in doing their job better. Yeah. Uh, the uh, is has the operational control of the police force. Us is just like a human resource department where we can, you know, generate ideas, you know, share with him to say, you know, good policing. You mentioned America just now. You know, one of the issues that I have with state policing, that is on the flip side, mm -hmm. is that it is not the governors in America that appoint the commissioners of police. You know that very well. Right. It is the, the office of the mayor. Mm. 
they are in charge of. And that one is like a collegiate system, mm -hmm. civil rights organization, uh, clergy, you know, that is, so that is one area that we have to, I'm sure that is the area of, uh, Kyle was was scared about. To say if you have uh, our political culture, our political mm. culture, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it doesn't make for you, you don't, you, you, you don't countenance, you know, decent people, you know, yeah. like you, you, you see a governor, you know, in the states, the deputy governor, mm -hmm. the speaker, you know, cannot have the effrontery to confront him. <laughs> you know, that is the way it is. And sometimes I, you know, I try to find a parallel. I said, where are we coming from? You know, we have these traditional rulers, uh, village heads. Have you ever had anybody going for an election to change them? You know, they, they don't change them. <laughs> before we let you go, before we let you go, on the issue of mergers, yes. uh, I mean, it, it's been stated, you know, the balkanization of the police seems yes. to have weakened yes. the police even yes. more. Is that a good place to start? merge the FRSC, NSCDC, NDLEA, and all the other agencies that were, you know, removed from the police. Is, will that be a good place to start? The advantage of that would be that, you know, the numeric strength of the police will would improve. Mm -hmm. Now, when I, took, when I took over as the, you know, chairman of the Police Service Commission, within a space of about, uh, Six months, the manpower wastages in the police had gone to about 2,000. That is retirement, deaths, and all those things. And the way, the, 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 uh, the, the, how they replenish it is so slow, mm. very, very slow. So you we have know. more people leaving than more people, people, people coming in. in. Yeah. They went and set up uh, <clears throat> the Polak. You know, Polak, it takes about four years for them to be able to graduate cadets. Then, you know, unfortunately, we canceled the direct, you know, entry this thing that most of us came in through. Wow. The cadet ASPs, you know, that is graduate officers. Mm. So you discover that now the police is losing capacity by the day. You know, so something has to be done to, you know, to be able to replenish it and make sure that, um, you know, there, there are gaps in for breath. That is just the truth. Mm. I guess we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much. It's Thank been a you. delight having you on Newsnight tonight. Solomon Arase, former Inspector General of Police and uh, Chairman Police Service Commission. Thank you very much for joining us. Hopefully the next time you're here, you have a good report card for the Nigeria Police. <laughs> we are going to improve. Great. Good to hear that.